I'm at the point where the clay is at um, chocolate hard now and I've, I've added everything I wanted to add and I've, I've carved it um, to the point where I'm just uh, cleaning it up to uh, call it complete for this stage and I'm getting rid of uh, the clay crumbs. So there's some, some clay crumbs that I'm just trying to get rid of so they're not stuck in there. I wet the brush a little bit and then I just go in there and clean them up. And this is also cleaning up my line of work, making it a little less uh, sharp on the edge. Um, also uh, making the surface of the clay body look a little less uh, rough because the sand comes up when, when I carve. So I'm just making it smooth in some spots and then cleaning it up. So I do that all the way around until I'm pretty content with um, the, way it, the way it looks. Get rid of any, any sharp lines because those won't go away if there's any sharp lines. I also rub with my fingers and make sure that there's no scratches that, that I don't like, any, any scratches that um, demand a lot of attention where I don't want that attention. Once I'm, I'm done doing this, in order for this to uh, dry slowly, I like to dry things slowly. Even though it's a small scale sculpture, I did add some things later on in the, in the drying process. So what I do is I loosely cover it. Um, I just loosely cover it like this. And uh, every few hours or so, or overnight after, after the night, I'll, I'll uncover it. I don't wanna, allow a lot of moisture to build up inside the bag because that moisture will eventually fall back on the on the piece. Uh, if the piece is too wet, it'll just oversaturate it and it'll, it'll change the appearance and sometimes even add a, a small surface cracks if it's too much uh, moisture after, after it dries from it dripping up from the bag onto the piece. So just loosely leave it like this and Eventually, it'll get to a stage known as bone dry. It'll start looking dry. It'll start looking dry on, on the edges where it, it's thinner. And then eventually, it'll all look bone dry. And then it's uh, ready to be fired. Um, I'll be able to touch it and it won't be cold to touch. Um, that tells me that most of the water is evaporated. And then I'll evaporate whatever water is left um, in, the, in the kiln during the bisque firing. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this, um, this process um, and um, I'll uh, look forward to uh, seeing how this turns out. This um, has been uh, fired and it's now uh, bisque fired. I'm gonna get it ready to uh, glaze it. What I wanna make sure is that my hands are clean and that I don't have any type of lotion in my hands or I didn't just eat a sandwich and have oils or chips. I wanna make sure that my hands are free of any type of oil because if I touch this piece, it'll absorb the oil and the oil will act as, as a resist and prevent the glaze from being absorbed. And then you'll have spots and inconsistencies and uh, um, we wanna eliminate those variables by making sure that our hands are uh, clean. Uh, so I wash them with soap. I don't have any, any type of oil on my hands anymore. This is uh, fresh out of the kiln. It has a little, some, some clay crumbs in some areas. So I'm gonna get rid of some of that, those clay crumbs by just using the needle tool and just kind of taking off whatever pieces of, of, of clay that, or now ceramics, uh, once something is fired, it goes from being clay to, to being ceramics after the disc fire. So I take the little crumbs of, of ceramic off the surface and I'm just kind of cleaning it off here, making sure that there's nothing that it's just gonna keep the, the glaze from going into the grooves like I want it to. I'm gonna do a basic staining technique with um, under glazes. I'm gonna do a few layers of under glaze and then I'm gonna put a clear glaze over that over those layers. So I'm just making sure again that all these little things are not in the, the grooves. Then after that, there's also uh, dust on there, like, uh, like clay ceramic dust. So I get a very clean sponge and I'm gonna wipe it, wipe it off. Getting rid of that, that dust, it will also act as um, a form of uh, resist and it'll keep the glaze from going on on this consistently. Make sure all the inside there. It's 
Just make sure I get all the high surfaces, close as I can to the low surfaces. You could tell that I took off some, some good amount of dust here because the water turned a different color. So I squeeze out the sponge and I keep doing it until it doesn't feel that dusty. You'll be able to tell when. Some people like to uh, run this over water. Um, the thing is, if I run it over water to get rid of all that dust, uh, it'll absorb a lot of water. This being as porous as it is, it'll absorb a lot of water and I have to wait for it to, to dry. So for the sake of uh, timing, I'm just sponging it down, which uh, works just about as good from my experience. It's just a little more, slightly more time consuming in a different way. Okay. I'm ready for the, the first layer. I want to make sure that it's dry because if it's not dry, the water that it absorbed will keep glaze from being absorbed consistently. So that's another variable. Um, so I make sure that it doesn't look uh, uh, wet, that it looks that it, it dry, like it dry. Um, that way the absorption of the glaze is, is consistent. I'm gonna start off with under glaze. This is kind of like a background a layer so the other colors can pop. So I'm doing something very light. This is uh, ivory beige, the color. Always make sure the lid is on tight when you're shaking it. And I'm gonna apply this focusing on the grooves. This is not gonna be a color that I want it to be on the surface. I want the, the ceramic color, uh, that orange color to show through. Uh, I want it to be on the surface. This is mostly for the grooves. I'm gonna focus on applying it on the grooves. So I'm gonna use this half inch brush. One of those, um, they call them disposable, but I, 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 use, them, I use them a lot before, before I dispose of them. And I don't have to be so perfect with this because I'm gonna rub it off with a, sponge it off, kind of like a, like a rubbing to make the, the surface pop up in a different way and then create that contrast. I'm not being super careful at this point. After I apply the first layer of that light color underglaze, I'm gonna get a larger clean sponge and I'm just gonna sponge off the surface. That way the, the glaze goes into the cavities, into the, the low points. I waited for the glaze to dry a little bit so it can uh, really stay in those grooves. Focusing on not just the, the line work, but also the surface, how I want that surface to be as close as possible to the, the clay body's color once it gets fired. And I'm not gonna be all concerned about, oh, I didn't get that one little spot or uh, I, I missed this tiny spot. Just going for an overall wipe down and, and if nothing stands out too much to me, I'll be happy with it. If it stands out, then it'll let me know, okay, I gotta, I gotta wipe that down more. So it's just preference as to what you want your surface to be. Since I'm gonna layer a lot of glazes, well not a lot, but I'm gonna layer about three colors, that they will blend when I'm rubbing them as mixing, but whatever the surface appears to the eye, that, that will be what turns out because these are under glazes, so they're very consistent as in what I'll, I'll be getting once the once it's fired. It'll look like that once it comes out of the firing. Once I rub it, I'm gonna wait for it to dry up a little bit, able to absorb the next, next color, the next layer. And I'm starting to get to a place where, okay, it's starting to feel like I wiped off enough, enough glaze. Wait for it to dry and, and apply the next coat. If you absolutely must get like a little section and you're like, I, I don't want it to be there, then you could use a, the brush, put a little bit of water on it and thin it out. So I'm gonna thin out the back of the ear, for example, a little bit. And that thins out the glaze, then I could, rub it and it's not so much glaze on there that 
that it's making that one section really, really pop out more than what I want it to. Okay, so I'll wait for this to look um, dry again. Once it looks dry again, I could apply the next coat. Right now you can tell that it looks a little bit saturated with water, so it looks a little on the darker, darker side of, of the, the tone of the, the ceramics. But I'll wait for that to, to look dry again and then do the next coat. Okay, so I uh, finished wiping down as much of the glaze on the surface that I wanted to. I allowed it to dry up, that way it, it gets the next, the next layer of, of glaze. I make sure that my, my brushes are very clean. And I'm gonna go with a, a yellow. Um, this one's called Deep Yellow. Sometimes the, the glaze looks slightly different than uh, what it'll look like before it's fired. It'll shift a little bit, but it's just the nature of minerals that are used to uh, get the get the color and the intense stains. Make sure that it's full cover. I'm gonna shake it up. I'm gonna use a thicker brush, wider brush. So this is a one inch brush instead of the, the half inch that I started with. Just because I'm not going again for specific details, I just want to get the glaze on there, then wipe it off. Got to make sure that it's well mixed. If you wanted to, if your glaze is a little bit on the thick end, you could thin it out a little bit since uh, we're approaching this like a stain. You could thin it out slightly, uh, that way it's applied uh, easier. So this one is slightly on the thicker side, so I'm just gonna put some on here. And get some clean water, I have my dirty water and then the clean water here. And I'll just add a little bit of water. It doesn't take much to thin it out. Keep in mind that when you thin out glazes, if you want the, the color of the glaze, the tone to be that, that, that bold, solid color and not look thinned out, um, translucent, you wanna make sure you don't add too much water or that you do uh, more layers. In this case, again, I'm just going for that stain look, so I'm not too concerned with it being too thin because it's going into the grooves and that'll get the right amount of thickness that I need by, by just getting it into the grooves. The cool thing about underglazes is that you could approach them almost uh, like acrylic. And I say almost because it's definitely not, not like acrylic, but you could mix colors and make your own colors by mixing underglazes. That last layer was a little, little on the thin, thin end, so I'm just going to do a quick second coat. Make sure I don't leave uh, blobs of, of the glaze in certain areas because this will, because this will, um, if you leave a like a big glob, like say I leave, I leave a big amount of glaze on there, that will fire like that. It won't, this is under glaze, so it's not gonna have a flux and it's not gonna settle. So you wanna watch out for those things when you're using under glaze, um, that you don't leave a, a glob in an area that you don't want it to uh, uh, appear um, like a big uh, drop or a big amount of glaze in a specific area. One thing you don't want to do is glaze the bottom. This is under glaze, so technically I could I could glaze the bottom with, with this glaze. And the reason you don't glaze the bottom is because glazes, when glazes have a flux, they'll stick to the the kiln shelf and that's that's a, that's a horrible thing to happen because your kiln shelf uh, will be ruined and you have to fix it by grinding it and it's just more tedious work that you have to uh, do um, when you could have avoided it by just wiping down the bottom. And I'll focus that when I apply the last glaze which is a clear glaze to, um, to make it look uh, slightly uh, more vivid and wet 
um, then the, the opaqueness that these underglazes will come out as they'll be a matte, opaque, um, no shine. Um, so that's why I'll apply a, um, a clear coat after. So I'm gonna do the same thing, um, just wipe this down. I have a lot of glaze here that I didn't use. I didn't cross contaminate. This hasn't been mixed with any other color. The water that I was using is, is, is clean. Uh, so I could just bring back this, this glaze back into this container and save it. I like to uh, just focus on saving um, glaze because everything adds up. So. So I'll do the same, I'll start wiping this down. Uh, once it dries, I'll wipe it down and I'll be ready for the next coat. So after adding some more coats of different colors, you know, I waited for it to be fully dry between each coat and then on the next coat is the same thing. I waited for it to be fully dry before I put a, a, a clear glaze. This is a opaque gloss. I'm gonna be on the too glossy uh, and I'm gonna apply this uh, with the brush. So uh, I'll do that right now. After a few layers, I'm ready for the, the clear coat. I'm gonna start off on the inside. The inside I didn't put any, um, any underglaze because I'm gonna want it to be just the natural um, color of the clay body. I'm gonna start off by putting the clear coat inside. This is low fire glaze, just clear. And I just start off by brushing it on. It's recommended that you put three coats because I don't want it to be super shiny, super glossy. I'm just gonna make sure that my coats are even. I might just put one coat and that'll give me somewhat of an inconsistent look, but it's, it's not to eat off of. So I'm okay with that. It's gonna look slightly wet, which will make the underglaze uh, pop. The colors will look a lot brighter instead of just that uh, opaque tone that they have, that matte, the matte look. So uh, I'm just gonna do one coat, even though if you wanted to make this functional in a way that you're gonna eat off of it, um, you would do three. Very important that it's completely dry. You don't want any type of moisture uh, when you're applying this coat so it can evenly absorb it. And also the underglazes, if they're wet, once you're putting the clear coat on, if they're wet, they're gonna start being smeared off. Underglazes do stick pretty well, but they have to be, be dry uh, for them to not be smeared off when, when I'm brushing on the, the clear coat. I don't want my brush too loaded, so what I do is if the brush is too loaded, then it's gonna, it's gonna get really messy. So I dab it on, just so it goes in the grooves pretty good. I'm not, I'm not really brushing it on, I'm dabbing it on. In the smooth areas, I do brush it on, but once I, after I dab it on, then I do brush off a little bit, brush it a little bit just to get it to spread out evenly. cover the whole thing. Try not to touch the areas that I brushed on or else it will just come off. Once the, the glaze is dry, then I could handle it a little bit more. But uh, right now that the, where, where I just applied it, 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 it's still wet. So I'm gonna make sure to not, not touch where it's wet because it'll just leave a, a fingerprint on there. For the smaller areas, I'm gonna use a smaller brush just so I can get into this, these smaller grooves here. I notice I miss some spots inside, I'll just back and retouch those. Once the glaze dries, you could, you could begin to see wherever it, there's no white, obviously it's where, where I missed. So I'll just come back and dab a little bit of glaze on there. So I'm 
getting pretty close to the bottom. And I'm gonna make sure that once I'm pretty happy with how I apply the blaze that, and now that I could handle it from up, up top here, because it's dry, that I make sure that any glaze on the bottom gets wiped off. Because that will stick to the kiln shelf. So I'll do another observation of what, what spots need a little more. By the looks of it, it looks like it's ready for the, the glaze firing. So this will be fired to a low, low temperature, low uh, earthenware temperature, and uh, we'll get to see this pretty soon.